the clock with Mark Zinni starts right now. From WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. Right now on Eyewitness News at 6, we start with an early warning weather alert. You are looking here at new video from East Haven tonight where the cleanup is underway after yesterday's severe storms. A drastic difference compared with today's weather as we take a look outside through our iCam for you in New Haven right now. A warm and sunny day. Quite nice out there, in fact. But we're keeping a close eye right now on the chance for more showers and thunderstorms heading our way tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Bruce Dupreece is tracking it all down for us right now. He joins us first up right now with more details. Hi there, Bruce. Hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. Well, the good news is that tomorrow does not look as volatile as it was yesterday, but the bad news is uh, there could be some uh, strong to severe storms in the state along with some torrential downpours. But today, we did have a nice break. There's Litchfield over the last three hours. You can see a mix of clouds and sunshine with those uh, fair weather clouds floating on uh, by. And right now, we have a, a partly cloudy sky at the Litchfield High School. It's comfortable, comfortably warm. We have stores at uh, 77, Winstead at 78. Bristol is 81, and New Haven is coming in at 80 degrees, and the humidity is not out of control. But it's going to go a lot higher during the day tomorrow as tropical moisture moves in. So tomorrow, it's not an enhanced risk like we, like we had yesterday. It's the shade of green, which is marginal. There's a higher risk from New York City on uh, points to the uh, south and west of there. Still, though, we can't roll out a couple of isolated severe storms tomorrow. The threat is damaging winds in some spots. Uh, torrential downpours could cause some very local flooding, a lower, lower risk for hail, and, you know, with the warm front nearby, you can't rule out an isolated tornado. But again, it's not as volatile as it was yesterday. For now, the severe weather is moving by to our south. Some of these storms in northern New Jersey could graze uh, New York City, but I think here in Connecticut, other than maybe far southwestern Fairfield County, will stay dry uh, through the evening, as Futurecast is kind of indicating. But showers do arrive overnight. There might even be a thunderstorm in this state by around dawn. And then as we go through the day tomorrow, there will be scattered showers and storms producing torrential downpours because uh, remnant moisture from Laura, tropical moisture from Laura, will be uh, coming on in here. And there it is, the remnants. Uh, it's hard to say exactly where it's going to go, but somebody could uh, get a pretty good drenching somewhere in southern New England as we go through the day tomorrow. But this will all come to an end tomorrow night, and Sunday looks fantastic. Of course, we'll talk about that and how nice the nice weather will last once it gets here. It's all ahead in the early warning forecast. All right. We'll see you in a few minutes, Bruce. Thank you very much. The cleanup continues across all parts of the state right now, including here in Brantford. The storm tore down hundreds of trees and poles there, leaving 99% of the town without power. That percentage is dropping as Eversource crews continue to work around the clock. We have live team coverage for you at 6. Channel 3's Mike Savino is standing by. He is in North Haven. But first, we want to start with Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Mark Robbins. He is in Brantford right now with the latest for us from there. Mark? Well, Mark, you're absolutely right. Progress is being made. I'm on Damascus Street here in Brantford, and I'll get out of the way. You can see the Eversource crews continuing to work. This street was once littered uh, with trees down, and it's one of many areas in the town in which crews have been working. And these crews, well, they've been working almost nonstop since the storm on Thursday. Yes, it's a long cleanup process for a rather quick storm. And what it left behind might soon be gone, but not forgotten. But this one is pretty bad. Maybe it's because all the trees falling or something like that it sounds really bad. Yeah, but it was done in like 10 minutes. Eversource is in the crosshairs of Connecticut's residents and government officials. Last month, the effort after the tropical storm left many without power for more than a week, and a repeat performance won't be accepted. I think uh, Eversource has said everywhere, sadly, but Brantford, 99% will be turned on by the end of today. And we're putting the pedal to the metal when it comes to what we got to do here in Brantford as well. The utility company says its protocol isn't changing this time, but communications must be more effective. We had the hearings yesterday and we acknowledge communications during Isaias could have been better, should have been better, will be better. The restoration and the amount of crews and the preparedness was according to our plan. 
Now the crews here with Eversource continue to work diligently. They are trying to get done uh, what they promised to do by Saturday night before that deadline. Uh, some of the concern is those storms that Bruce is talking may pop up during the day on Saturday. Reporting live from the Mobile Newsroom in Brantford, Mark Robbins, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And that is the last thing some people need, Mark. Thank you very much. Now, Brantford wasn't the only town that spent the day cleaning up today. Governor Ned Lamont and Senator Richard Blumenthal toured some of the surrounding towns as well. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Mike Savino picks up our team coverage. He is live with the Mobile Newsroom in North Haven. Mike? Yes, and Mark, uh, I'm going to step out of the way. This is one of the scenes that they would have seen while they were here in North Haven. And as we know, that the damage is not as widespread as it was during Isaias. Places like here in North Haven, it certainly was just as intense. And for the residents, the storm also came really fast. I looked up here and I could hear the wind, but I saw the actually sheet of rain come down the street. That's when I ran in the house. Don Jacobson was sitting on his porch in North Haven when he saw Thursday's storm enter his neighborhood. He immediately went inside and straight into his basement. The freight train. The, and I always said and it, doesn't, it does sound like that. He's certain a tornado touched down in North Haven. Today, the National Weather Service was assessing the damage to figure out if that happened. Governor Ned Lamont and Senator Richard Blumenthal also toured the town. Unlike uh, Isaias, uh, which was much more broad-based, this was much narrower, co concentrated on a half dozen towns. There, tree-cutting crews were working to clean up so utilities could restore power. Eversource was already facing heat, with some pointing to United Illuminating as a model. What we may well need is a smarter, smaller, more responsive utility than Eversource. But Eversource says they're working quickly. We're going to work our tails off to do that much faster. Now, UI is still working to restore power outages as well. At about 20 minutes ago, that number was just over 9,100 customers without power in the greater New Haven area. Here in North Haven, that number was 3,700 people still without power. Live from North Haven, Mike Savito, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Mike, thank you very much. Meanwhile, Hamden was also hit hard by the fast-moving storm. At the height of it all yesterday, about a third of the people there were without power. Downed trees and power lines left several roads blocked. On the corner of Shepherd and Sherman, a huge tree there was uprooted and landed on a house. Some really big trees came down. It was pretty uh, crazy. And a lot of these trees I had slated to come down uh, in like two weeks, and uh, Mother Nature just beat me to it. My pergola just absolutely blew off of the top of the foundations, and it's a mess around here. I mean, the damage is just unbelievable in many places. Power and tree crews spent today working to clean up. Uh, many say the storm really was a case of deja vu because they just finished cleaning up after Isaias. Right now, we're following some breaking news again for you in Groton at 6, where police are investigating after a body was recovered from the water. We're told the man's body was found floating off Eastern Point Beach. Investigators are still trying to figure out exactly what happened there. As soon as we learn more information, we will bring it to you on air and online on the Channel 3 app. Also right now for you at 6, more than 15 months after the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos, the investigation continues. Today, the former girlfriend of Dulos's estranged husband, Fotis, is facing some new charges. Michelle Traconis is now facing additional tampering with evidence charges. She appeared in Stamford Superior Court today, her attorney asking the judge to remove her 24-hour GPS monitoring, a request, though, that was denied. The judge did rule that Traconis could be removed from supervision by a probation officer. Traconis' sister spoke out and said she is optimistic. I just want to reinforce that uh, my sister is innocent and that I thank God uh, for today's baby steps. Um, I really thank him because I had the opportunity to come here and be together. We are a very united family and we will continue support, supporting him. Jennifer Dulos went missing back in May of 2019 while in the middle of a bitter divorce with her husband, then Fotis Dulos. Draconis is accused of helping Dulos cover up her murder. She goes back to court in October. Still ahead for you right here at 6, two local nursing homes are facing some pretty hefty fines after failing to test dozens of workers for COVID-19. Why they say the testing troubles were really out of their control. Also ahead, a warning right now from state officials after more mosquitoes tested positive for the West Nile virus. We will tell you which towns they were found in and how you can protect yourself. And as we go to break, a live look outside from our iCam for you in Waterbury. You can see a, a beautiful night out there right now. Bruce is tracking 
some more bad weather tomorrow to kick off our Saturday or at least end the day. He'll break it all down for you when the News at 6 continues. I am so ready for a relationship. You, you can't just find a Johnny anywhere. <laughs> She's so sweet, my honey in the summer. I'm coming to find the real thing. This is my time to meet someone. Someone who loves Sully as much as Sully loves Sully. Love Island, new tonight, 9, 8 central on CBS. The all-new early warning weather tracker is sponsored by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. The all-new Silverado HD adds to the legendary capability of the strongest, most advanced Silverados ever. With best-in-class camera technology and larger, more functional beds than any competitor, the only truck that can compare to a Silverado is another Silverado. Or get a total value of $6,000 on this Silverado All-Star Z71 without the optional camera technology package. Silverado, the number one selling full-size pickup in Connecticut. A smile has the power to get you feeling all right. At Aspen Dental, it's all right to smile again with dentures starting at just $3.99. We craft them in our on-site labs from start to finish, so they never leave our office, and you never have to worry. And with dentures made in as little as a day, you can smile right on schedule. Relief you need at a price you can afford. Right fit, right quality, right price. At Aspen Dental, it's all right to smile again. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL today. Welcome back, everyone. New for you at 6, the Connecticut Department of Public Health is fining two nursing homes that failed to test dozens of employees for coronavirus. Avery Nursing Home in Hartford and Hamden Rehab and Health Center in Hamden were each fined $1,100. Both nursing homes say the employees were not able to attend the scheduled testing times because they were filling shifts. An executive order signed by Governor Ned Lamont in June requires weekly testing of all nursing home staff until no employees or residents test positive. Confirmed cases on campus at UConn are still rising. The school announced seven new positive cases today. Five are students who live in the Garrigus Suite Residence Hall, which is now under quarantine tonight. That brings the total number of positive cases to 59 since students returned to campus about two weeks ago. Six have fully recovered and the rest remain in isolation. Mosquitoes in 14 Connecticut towns tested positive for West Nile virus, something else to worry about right now. The state mosquito management program says the insects were in several of the largest cities, including Hartford, New Britain, New Haven, and Wethersfield. One person in the state tested positive so far for West Nile virus. Officials say August and September are the riskiest months for infection, so they're encouraging everyone use bug spray, wear long sleeve shirts and pants, and take steps to control mosquitoes, like dumping out water around the house or in the yard and stuff. For a full list of those affected towns and more details, you can go anytime to the Channel 3 app. Still ahead for you right here at 6, hundreds of thousands along the Gulf Coast are now dealing with the damage left behind after Hurricane Laura slammed the region. We will take you inside the recovery efforts and tell you why it could take weeks before power is restored. And that storm is going to impact our weather coming up tomorrow as we take a live look outside from our ICAM for you over Middletown. Certainly a great night right now. Bruce's full forecast is straight ahead. Don't go anywhere. We need you. This year is a little different, but the cause remains the same. The 2020 Channel 3 Kids Camp Golf Tournament is right around the corner. Join us on September 15th at Fox Hop Yard in East Haddam. For more information, head to channel3kidscamp.org. Experience the joy of a bigger world in a highly connected Lexus vehicle at the Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Lease the 2020 UX250 Hybrid All-Wheel Drive for $299 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Connecticut needs a people's recovery, not billionaire bailouts. While working families struggle, Connecticut billionaires profit from the pandemic. It doesn't have to be this way. It's up to us. We deserve a people's recovery. It's up to us. We can and should tax the rich. Call your state legislators now. Find your keys. Find your get up and go. Find pants that aren't sweats. 
Find your friends. Find your sense of wonder. Find the world is new again. At Chevy, we'd like to take you there. Now, during the Chevy Open Road Sales Event, qualified lessees can get this Trax for around $139 a month. Or get up to 15% of MSRP cash back on select 2020 models when you purchase. I was one when my father started the barnyard and we had our first display at the Big E. With things being a little different this year, we're bringing it closer to home. From small sheds to large barns, there is a building for everyone on display at our showcase locations in Ellington and Bethel. Now is a perfect time to get a new shed, garage, barn, or pavilion at the best prices of the year. Visit us for the best quality at our showcase locations in Ellington and Bethel. The Barnyard and Great Country Garages, builders of quality since 1984. Experience the adventure of a bigger world in a highly capable Lexus SUV at the Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Lease the 2020 RX 350 all-wheel drive for $4.19 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. All right, we could have some uh, strong to severe storms in Connecticut tomorrow, but for now, it's really nice outside. We've got a nice Friday evening underway. Here's early warning pinpoint Doppler. You can see that we do have some rain in northern New Jersey that's moving to the southeast. It's heading uh, toward the New York City area. Uh, that could potentially graze far southwestern Connecticut around Greenwich early this evening, but uh, most of us will stay dry. So a nice evening to look forward to. All the really rough weather is south of there. Uh, look at that cluster of severe storms right along the uh, New Jersey coastline right now. Okay, so uh, we also have to deal with the uh, remnants of uh, Laura. Laura is a, a depression. It's uh, now losing its tropical characteristics, but it's still producing heavy rain and a tornado threat, and it's moving to the east, so some of that tropical moisture will come into play here in Connecticut tomorrow. But for now, we're in great shape. Just a partly cloudy sky in uh, Torrington and New London looks spectacular. Uh, temperature of 77 degrees right now with a little bit of a breeze off the water, keeping the temperature lower there. Meanwhile, it's 82 in Hartford, 80 at Windsor Locks, and 79 degrees in Waterbury. Dew points range from 57 in Windsor Locks to 67 in uh, New Haven. So we're kind of on the edge of the dry air right now, but the high humidity is going to come right back at us. You can see that just to our south, dew points are in the uh, 70s where you see that uh, yellow area. So the dividing line is just to the south of Connecticut right now. We have drier over us, humid air to our south, and that's where the instability is and the uh, severe thunderstorms right now. You can see that severe thunderstorm watch in effect for portions of the mid-Atlantic states. That warm front will come right back at us tonight, so that means increasing clouds with the rising chance for showers, especially after midnight. There could even be a strong thunderstorm somewhere in southern New England tomorrow morning. And then as we go into the afternoon, showers and storms will be scattered about the state, and the remnants of Alora is hard to to say exactly where they will go, but somebody could get drenched in uh, some parts of southern New England uh, during the day uh, tomorrow. So we'll have to be on the lookout for some localized poor drainage and flash flooding. But off to our north and west, we have a cold front tomorrow evening. That will come through and shove all the moisture out to sea by Sunday morning. So Sunday is shaping up to be a beautiful day with a dry northwesterly breeze and a mix of clouds and sunshine. Uh, Sunday, by far the better of the two weekend days. So lows tonight 60s to uh, near 70 and your highs for tomorrow in the 70s to near 80 but the humidity is going to go pretty high dew points will likely top 70 so here's your 70 forecast Sunday looks a lot better partly sunny and breezy 79 52 Sunday night that's going to be nice uh, walking out the door Monday morning and Monday looks spectacular sunny and 79 there is a chance for showers Tuesday and Wednesday but there's also a chance the showers could stay to our south I'm going to go cautiously optimistic here and call for mostly dry weather. Thursday, we could hit 90, a chance for an afternoon storm. And then uh, Friday, perhaps a, a shower or storm threat with a high of 82. And the shoreline this weekend will be consistent with highs near 80 both Saturday and Sunday. Okay, Bruce, thank you. Speaking of Laura, we have the latest right now on the storm's aftermath. Right now, in fact, people in the Gulf Coast are digging out from all the damage after Laura left a tornado-like path of destruction 40 miles wide. This video is so hard to look at. These people are living through so much. The massive storm slammed ashore yesterday, packing 150 mile an hour winds and sending storm surge there 10 feet high over homes and businesses. This used to be in the back of the house. This is probably not going to be home anymore. I don't 
know that we'll be able to rebuild it. We want you to be prepared to be without power for not days, but I would suggest that you be prepared for weeks. Hundreds of thousands are dealing with widespread water and power outages. Officials say the total extent of the damage may not be known for days because so many roads are still not passable. Today is International Overdose Awareness Day, and this year the pandemic has made battling addiction even more difficult. Channel 3's Kara Sunland spoke with Hartford HealthCare Clinical Manager John Potter about the impact that it's had and how they're bringing support to those in need of help. Thank you so much for being with us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So has COVID impacted drug use and even overdose? Are we seeing more overdose deaths? It has. So COVID has significantly impacted overdose and drug use across the state. Um, it's definitely caused an increase in stress and isolation for many people. So unfortunately, as a result, um, fatal opioid overdoses in Connecticut has increased approximately 18% in the first six months of 2020 from the previous year. Wow, 18%. I know there are yeah. several free events, some even coming up tomorrow, to really help families support loved ones who are struggling. Can you talk about the free workshops and events? Absolutely. So um, tomorrow, um, August 29th, Rushford in the City of Meriden, we're hosting an Overdose Awareness Day drive through event at Harvard Park in Meriden. Um, and that's from 11 to 2 p.m., which will include uh, different resources and giveaways for people. Also, this upcoming Monday, August 31st, Rushford um, is hosting various virtual events, including a panel discussion surrounding overdose awareness. This will be held on Rushford in the Meriden Healthy Youth Coalition Facebook page. And then also on August 31st, we're ho hosting a uh, virtual Talk Save Lives and Narcan training via Zoom from uh, noon to 1.30. And then at 6 to 8 p.m., we're hosting a live virtual concert. And there's a, that's a lot for people to take in. I'm sure they can go to the Hartford HealthCare website or the Rushford website, find out information about this. Absolutely, yes. The Rushford website, uh, Facebook page, also the Meriden Healthy Youth Coalition Facebook page. Okay, because those are really good things for families to get their head around because there is a stigma around this topic. So how do you help people actually get over the shame and get the treatment they need? Uh, absolutely. I think we need to be more proactive and, and less reactive. The more conversations we can have around substance use and mental health and the more we can promote awareness, the better chance we have at reducing or eliminating that stigma. Well, thank you so much for sharing some time with us and letting people know that there is help available and even some free events to get started with. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Connecticut's Back to School Authority is sponsored by Yale New Haven Children's Hospital, one of the best in the nation. Okay, Eyewitness News is your Back to School Authority, and Mystic Aquarium is offering new full-day academic programs for students in kindergarten through seventh grade. Educators will work with students on virtual learning sessions assigned by their school and teachers. They are set to begin coming up on November I should say September 14th. I was wondering, was that a crab we just saw right there? I think so. <laughs> Share the Love is sponsored by Hartford HealthCare, helping put more life in your life. All right, let's share some love right now. Tonight's picture comes from April in Tallinn, and look at that great smile right there. April says her granddaughter Zoe was so excited for her first day of preschool. Uh, the sign there is a bit hard to read, but it says Zoe's favorite thing to do is ride her bike. She loves every color in the rainbow, and when she grows up, she wants to be a unicorn. I love it. So you're absolutely adorable. Good luck this year in school. Uh, we want to see what you're seeing in your neighborhoods. You can use a picture. Uh, use our Channel 3 app to send us a picture anytime. We love to see them, especially when they're cute kids like that. Welcome to A Minute with Foxwoods. Sebastian, welcome to this week's Minute with Foxwoods. It's Virgo season and we're having a party for every Virgo. Celebrate your birthday social distance style on Fab Friday with $8 margaritas and rum punch at Central in the Fox Tower. Or join us at Live at Atrium for Flashback Friday featuring exciting drink specials and all the throwback hits you grew up with. This Saturday, join us at 6 p.m. for an outrageous live out loud drag happy hour on Foxwoods Instagram Live featuring drag performance a mixology class, interactive charades, and exciting prizes and more. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. The party continues all week long. We're showing photos, viewers, day off, and 
Rockin' Man on Saturday and Sunday at the Foxwoods Drive-In. Remember, every day is a great day for Foxwoods. Visit foxwoods.com to plan your next Foxwoods vacation. Every day is a great day for Foxwoods. For details, visit foxwoods.com. This selenite gray is so pretty, isn't it? Wow. Uh, Jim, could you pop the hood for us? There she is. Turbocharge, right? Yes, it is. Jim, could you uh, kick the tires? Oh, yes. Mm. Could you change the color inside the car? Oh, sure. How about blue? That's more cyan, but jump in the back seat, Jim. Act like my kids. How much longer? Exactly how they sound. It's got massaging seats too, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Visit the Mercedes-Benz Summer Event or shop online at participating dealers. Get 0% APR financing up to 36 months on select new and certified pre-owned models. What really matters in journalism? The truth. The facts. Getting to the heart of the story. And it's our promise to you. Find your keys. Find your get up and go. Find pants that aren't sweats. Find your friends. Find your sense of wonder. Find the world is new again. At Chevy, we'd like to take you there. Now, during the Chevy Open Road Sales Event, qualified lessees can get this Trax for around $139 a month. Or get up to 15% of MSRP cash back on select 2020 models when you purchase. August is now the month to replace your windows and doors. Why? Because Renewal by Anderson has declared August National Replacement Window Month. Only through August 31st, take $270 off every window. Take $780 off every patio door and entry door. Plus, get an extra 5% off your entire order. And get a whole year with no money down, no payments, and no interest. For your peace of mind, know that we've adjusted our operations to serve you in the safest way possible. So you can save hundreds during National Replacement Window Month. Take $270 off every window. Take $780 off every patio door and entry door plus get an extra five percent off your order and with our financing you'll have a whole year where you'll pay absolutely nothing to schedule your free appointment call renewal by anderson before august 31st 1-800-416-4646 all right, the last weekend of August is here. September begins next Tuesday. It's hard to believe. Now, tonight we're starting out great, but the sky will become cloudy. Showers will develop after midnight, low 65 to 72. Then tomorrow, showers and storms. Could, some could be strong too severe. Some heavy downpours too. Highs near 80 and very humid, but Sunday looks a whole lot better. Partly sunny and breezy with a low humidity, a high of 79, and gorgeous Monday too. Already right, Bruce, stay with the Channel 3 app tomorrow for updates on that weather, and uh, have a great night, everybody. I'll see you back here for Eyewitness News at 11.